Warning. Failure to secure this container properly could result in a compromised server. So just over a year ago, I released a video about a Docker service, not necessarily just a Docker service, but in our case, a Docker service called Guacamole. Now, the cool thing about Guacamole is that you can use it to remotely access all kinds of different services, uh, devices, whatever, on your network. Now, I primarily use it for remote desktop into the PC that I'm on right now. Um, I've also added my laptop to that just to do some testing, um, but also I've got it set up to access uh, my Synology device uh, via SSH, my Proxmox server via SSH, uh, and a couple of other different uh, services or servers on my network, again, via SSH, just so that in case I'm away from the house and I need to manage something, reboot something, whatever the case is, I've got one central location to log into and manage all of my devices remotely. That's kind of the idea behind Guacamole. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space? to host an app, Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. Now, more recently, uh, I've been talking a little bit more about uh, Cloudflare and more specifically Cloudflare tunnels. And as a result of that, uh, several people have asked me to make a video showing how to get guacamole set up with Cloudflare tunnels. Now, in this video, I'm going to show how to uh, get Guacamole set up. I'm actually going to set up a different version than what I showed in the original version, uh, because as it turns out, uh, the Osnu version that I've been using uh, forever now uh, hasn't been updated in two years. So I found another easy to install Docker container for Guacamole uh, that was updated four days ago. Uh, and that makes me feel a little bit better about using it. So uh, we're, we're gonna cover how to get that installed. Uh, we're gonna show how to get um, an RDP client set up, that's a remote desktop for Windows, uh, as well as some SSH stuff. We're also going to show how to get a tunnel configured to work with Guacamole. Now, there are some prerequisites to this video. The first one being uh, Docker. Uh, Docker is gonna be super helpful since we're dealing with Docker here. Uh, I'm also going to do some stuff in Portainer. You don't have to do Portainer uh, installation of, of the, uh, the guacamole container, but I'm gonna use Portainer for this just because it's easier. Also, it would be super, super helpful if you had uh, some, some foundational knowledge of Cloudflare tunnels and how to get them set up and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't wanna go too much into depth on, on configuring Cloudflare tunnels and, and security and things like that. I've already made two dedicated videos on that. So if you're not sure what a Cloudflare tunnel is uh, or how to set it up, definitely check that video out. Also, uh, if you're um, not familiar with using uh, additional security, a different or, or additional uh, authentication, whether it's Google or GitHub or whatever, uh, I've made a dedicated video about that as well. And I encourage you to check out both of those uh, tunnel videos. So with that long preamble out of the way, let's take a look at getting Guacamole set up and configured with Cloudflare tunnels. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually take a look at the Guacamole container that we're going to use here. Uh, I'm over on hub.docker.com. I'll put a link to this and everything else in the description down below. Um, but if we take a look, uh, I'm not gonna try, I'll, I'll butcher that, I'm not even gonna try. Um, but we can see updated four days ago um, and we can kind of get an idea of all of the stuff going on here. He's done a really good do job of documenting everything. I say he, I shouldn't assume, but this developer has done a really good job of, of documenting everything uh, from you know the Docker Compose that you're gonna use, uh, any extensions that are available on this, uh, including LDAP, two-factor authentication, OpenID, uh, TOTP, two-factor authentication, um, ad hoc, SAML, lots of different options in here that you can configure. Uh, we're not going to in this video because again, uh, we're gonna do this with Cloudflare Tunnels and I've already shown how to add third-party uh, authentication with Cloudflare Tunnels in another video. Uh, so we're not going to add any of these extensions, just know that they are available. Uh, when you first get logged in or that when you first get this 
set up rather, uh, you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have to log in and the username and password for that is right here under default user. Uh, the username and the password are both guac admin. I suggest changing those once we get logged in. Basically, uh, this is the uh, the Docker Compose that we're gonna use for this. I've cleaned it up a little bit and I put it in a, in a notepad in my other screen over here. Uh, but this is more or less what we're going to use to deploy this on our Docker container or our Docker server using Portainer. Uh, and then of course, there's there's more information down here. I definitely recommend going and checking this out. Uh, it's just, it's got a lot of good information in here. If you're not sure, if you've got questions, whatever the case is there. Now that we have that information, let's jump over to our Portainer instance and uh, go ahead and get this installed. So what we're gonna do, obviously I'm gonna jump over to my Portainer. Um, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna land somewhere like this. I'm just gonna come over here to Stacks over here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to add a stack to this. Uh, and I'm just gonna paste this in here and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. I'm gonna call this a uh, new guac. Uh, just like so. So basically, if we take a look at the at the Docker Compose in the web editor here, uh, it's a version three Docker Compose. Uh, we've got just one service in here, which is guacamole. Our image is again, uh, this developer's name and then slash guacamole. The container name is also just guacamole, very standard, very straightforward here. Uh, we're gonna have a volume to store the data for this. Um, and this is a, is a, a Docker volume that we're using here. Uh, you could change this to a mapped volume if you wanted to, um, just by doing something like home, slash docker slash uh, containers slash um, actually, yeah. And then uh, let's call it guac, right? You could do something like that if you wanted to. If you went this route of the mapped volume, like I'm showing here, uh, of course you would just go ahead and remove the, the volume section down below. Um, but since we're not using um, a mapped volume, we need to have this, uh, this volume declared down here uh, just so that the container knows what to do. So we've got our volume here that we just talked about. And of course ports, uh, you can change the ports on here if you need to. However, uh, don't change or only change the left-hand side here. Don't change anything uh, after the colon, just the the, the, the container is uh, put together in such a way that it depends on the information on the right side of the colon, uh, whether that's the ports or the volumes or whatever. I uh, never change anything on the right-hand side of the colon there. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make something up here. I'm gonna do uh, 8194, sure, why not? Um, and that's all we need to do at this point. So. With that out of the way, once we're once we're comfortable with how this looks, we're ready to go ahead and deploy. We'll just scroll down to the very bottom where it says deploy the stack down here. We're gonna give this just a second to do its thing. This should only take a couple of minutes tops. Um, of course, the the the, the guacamole image is about 450-ish megs. Uh, if you're never if you're not ever sure about how big a Docker image is, you can usually find out if you go over to uh, the hub.docker.com page and go over here to tags. So over here we can see uh, the size of the container. Uh, yeah, the container image rather, uh, and it is 447.55 megs for the AMD, that's AMD and Intel. Um, and then the ARM64, so it also supports uh, ARM devices, which I appreciate that that is included here. Uh, we can see that that's, uh, that uh, size is 427.22 megs. So just keep that in mind when you're downloading this, that your internet speed will uh, very directly determine how fast these images download to your server. So if we go back over here to Portainer um, and then just do a search for guac, Oops, if I could spell. Uh, and here is our new guac, the one we just deployed. You can see I've been messing with some other stuff in here as well, but we're gonna go with this new guac option right here. And if we just click right there, uh, it, immediately it just drops us into our dashboard. Of course, this is only accessing it locally. This is still on an IP address. So I'm actually, actually gonna grab that IP address and the port up there so that we can uh, go over to Cloudflare to create uh, the tunnel that we're going to need uh, for uh, for accessing our guacamole remotely. So I'm gonna jump over here to Cloudflare tunnels. You can see I've got a bunch of tunnels in here already. Uh, I'm just going to create a new tunnel and I'm just gonna call this um, new guac, just so that my naming conventions are, are, are synchronous, I guess, and that I don't get confused later on. Uh, once I've got my tunnel name in, I can click on save the tunnel. And then it's going to uh, give me this information uh, on how to get this installed. Now, I already have a, a tunnel agent on my Docker server. So I'm just going to replace the token of what I've got with the one that's been given to me here. Um, I'm just gonna copy that and then I'll modify it. So now I'll come back over to my portainer and I'll find um, my container for, uh, for my Cloudflare agent, which is right here. I'm just gonna come into here open this up. And of course, I'm only doing this because I've already got an agent. If you don't already have an agent on here, you would wanna follow the steps that again, that I outline in those other videos. So I'm just gonna come down to my token right here under command. 
and I'm just gonna replace it. I don't even think it's a different, uh, different token, but I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it anyway, just in case, and click replace. So we'll give this a second to redeploy like it did. Uh, container has been successfully created, great. So now we can come back over to Cloudflare. Uh, here we can see that we've got a connector ID. I will have to, of course, block my IP there, that's fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna click next. Okay, so the next thing it wants me to do is create a subdomain for uh, for my application here, right? So I'm just gonna do guac and I'll do uh, dbtech.com like so. I'm gonna select HTTP for this uh, just because that's how it's how, how we would access it over here locally. There's no HTTPS in the Docker container. So we're going to use HTTP for our service type. Then we're gonna put in our IP address and port, the same IP address and port, again, that we're using to access this locally. Um, and once we've got this, we can go ahead and click on save host name. Give this a second, there it is. And then we should just be able to click right there. And there we go. Now, if we take a look, we're access, accessing this on guac.dbtech.com. Of course, it would be your subdomain and domain there, but uh, we can see that we have a secure connection. Uh, we've got a, a valid certificate here. Everything there is good to go. Now, you'll also see here, um, that it's asking to see text and images copied to your clipboard. That's super helpful when you're copying and pasting from one device, whatever device you're on, to um, the remote device. In this case, you know, maybe a server, a remote desktop, whatever the case is. Uh, you can't allow or disallow uh, the guacamole uh, container, the application here, to have access to your clipboard for easier management and, and copying and pasting between devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow that. Then I'm gonna get logged in. Again, it's guac admin for the username and password. And the first thing I wanna do here, obviously, is go to settings, uh, go to users, uh, go to here, and I wanna change my password uh, just because I don't wanna use a uh, guac admin. Now, you could actually take this a step further, create a new user, right? So you would just come over here, click on create new user, um, like so, like so, and click save. In fact, this is probably the better way to do it. Uh, then I'm gonna log out. I'm gonna log back in. And then I'm gonna come back up to here, go to settings, uh, ooh, I didn't give myself uh, admin privileges, so uh, way to go me. Uh, let's do that. I can't believe I, I missed that, but users, uh, DB Tech, and then system admin, create new users. I'm just gonna give myself all of the privileges and I'm gonna click save. And then I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna log back in. So then I'm gonna come over here to walk admin. I'm gonna delete uh, that user just so uh, there's no chance of somebody trying to use that user later on. It's just, I think, good practice to remove the default user, create your own user first, obviously, and then delete the default user that's in there just for better security. So once we've got that, what we wanna do, obviously, is make it so that we can remote into other devices. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's come back over here to connections up here at the top, and we're going to create a new connection. And then there's a bunch of stuff in here because there are so many different protocols that you can use, uh, like Kubernetes, RDP, SSH, Telnet, VNC. All of those are available in here. So there are uh, lots of different things in here uh, that you can use to add different uh, you know, credentials or flags or, or criteria to each of those different protocols. Again, for the sake of keeping things simple, uh, I'm just going to show SSH and RDP for this. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to change this to RDP. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna call this laptop. This is the laptop again that's in the other room. So uh, what we wanna do next is go down here to where it says parameters, uh, network, the host name is gonna be the IP address of that. 39 like so, and then the port for RDP um, is 3389, I believe. Let me let me double check that. Yeah, so the, the port for RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol for Windows is 3389, so we've got our host name and our, our port. But then we're gonna put in the username and password for that system. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind with that, is that uh, you will need to make sure that Remote Desktop Protocol is enabled on any device that you want to, or any Windows device that you want to connect to. So the easiest way to do that is come down to your start button and type in um, allow uh, remote invitations. Nope, was it there? Of course, this is on Windows 11. So uh, 
connect and use this PC from another device using the remote desktop platform is what you're looking for. Again, whether that's on Windows 10 or 11, uh, it is a little bit different on 10 than it is on 11 or 11 versus 10, whatever. You need to make sure that you have a remote desktop enabled uh, for uh, to, in, before you can do this. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and, and in order to re enable remote desktop protocol on Windows, you also need to make sure that your user account has a password. Um, I know a lot of times when I set up a Windows uh, PC or laptop that doesn't go anywhere, I don't put a password on it because I don't care. However, for security reasons, for remote desktop, you do need to have a username and password set up on any of the Windows devices you're trying to connect to. So there you go. So once we've got that, we, we can go ahead and put in our username and our password. And then um, because chances are you're not going to be on any kind of a domain for your home network, you might be, but I doubt it. Um, you wanna make sure that you come down here and ignore the server certificate. If you don't do that, it'll throw an error and it won't let you connect. So um, I think that's all we need to do here. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. We're gonna click on save. Um, and then what we need to do is come back up to the top right where our username is, click on home, and then it brings us back to here. I, I hate that they're in two separate areas, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on laptop. And as long as anything doesn't go wrong, give this a second, there we go. Uh, here we can see that I am I am logged into a different PC entirely. Uh, this is you know the PC, I've, again, I've got on uh, in, in the other room. Let me show you what remote desktop uh, configuration looks like there. So oops, we're gonna do uh, allow, remote, or, or allow remote connections to this computer. Um, and then remote desktop is right here. And then you can click on show settings. And then again, for Windows 10, it will be under remote desktop here and then allow remote connections to the server. And then make sure that allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with uh, network level authentication is ticked there. Once you're good with that, you can click okay. And of course, here is, we're already, we're already remoted, remoted into a different system already. This is remote desktop. Um, and, and we can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, you know, I've got some audition stuff up. I have some recordings I did yesterday. Uh, of course, I've got a terminal here. Uh, right there, we can see the IP address that we used. Of course, there's also a Wi-Fi option there because that's a laptop that has Wi-Fi, go figure. That's how easy it is to get remoted into a, um, a Windows system using RDP via Guac, via, uh, Cloudflare tunnels. Very, very straightforward, very easy. Uh, so let's do one more quick one here. Um, also, since there's really no option, there's no like little uh, tab over here on either side or anywhere. Uh, when you're on Windows, you can just come over to here, uh, down to the bottom right where the Windows button is, or in the middle if you're on Windows 11, uh, click the power button and then click disconnect. It's gonna throw this up. You can say, do you wanna reconnect, go home or log out? I'm gonna say go home. And it's gonna bring us back to our dashboard here. So now let's do one more, but we're gonna do SSH this time. We're gonna do uh, connections. We're going to create a new connection. Uh, again, we're going to give this a name. I'm gonna call this Jarvis. Uh, this will be uh, SSH. Um, our host name, nope, we're gonna come down to our network uh, host name, like so. We're gonna give it a port. Um, if you had a public host heat, you could put that in. I'm not going to, but you could. Also notice that there's an option for a private key. You could use that as well if you had uh, SSH keys set up. Uh, you could absolutely put your private key in here and connect without a password. Um, I don't have that set up presently, but you absolutely could do that. And that's really all you need here um, is just the, um, the the name, the protocol, the network host name, the, the network port, and your username and password. We're gonna go ahead, uh, scroll down, click save. Again, we're gonna come up to the top right, click home. And then we're gonna go over here to uh, Jarvis. And there we go, just that quickly and easily, I'm logged in to Jarvis via SSH so that I can do any kind of my remote, any kind of remote administration I might need to do uh, both on, on now Jarvis as well as that laptop. Uh, you can add as many different connections as you'd like uh, for, for both, you know, like, well, like we saw earlier. Um, but first, let me, let me get logged out of here. All we've got to do is just do exit. It's gonna log out. Again, I can go home. Uh, but you can do as many of the different connections as you want. Uh, if you go over here under connections, uh, you can also see history of who has logged in, who has done what, who, where they've connected, what the remote host name was. Um, again, you can add new users like we did at the beginning of this. We can do groups. 
uh, where we can uh, set up group des designations for people. Uh, so maybe you want to, maybe you've got a lot of different people that are going to remote into stuff. You can set up groups, give them uh, specific uh, permissions if you want to do that. Uh, you can say who they're allowed to connect to. Uh, so I, I kind of like that there is some, um, some, some, some control as to who can do what very, very easily with groups here. Uh, if we come back, we, again, we can go to connections. We can create a new connection. We can create a new group um, uh, uh, under those connections. So you can kind of uh, 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 group different connections together if you wanted to do that. Again, new connections, lots of options in here. Again, we've got all kinds of different protocols in here we can create connections with. And then if we go to preferences, you know, you can change your display language, your time zone, current new passwords, default input method, um, and default mouse emulation mode. So lots of different options in there. Uh, and of course, like I said, uh, I would highly recommend adding an additional layer of authentication to this. Uh, in fact, if we come back over to here, um, oops, I lied. If we come back over to here, again, this is guac.dbtech.com. Uh, if I disable my current configuration here uh, from Cloudflare, and I refresh uh, and say, hey, you you can't visit this. You can't access this site because of the way I've got uh, my, my uh, Cloudflare uh, security set up. So I know this is kind of a long video and I only a little bit apologize for that. I wanted to make sure we had a good foundational understanding of how to connect or how to get guacamole installed and then get a tunnel installed and get uh, the tunnel attached to the container. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That really does help me out quite a bit. Uh, if you know of anybody who's looking for this solution, definitely share this video with them. Um, but I think that's gonna kind of cover everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, so with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.